Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 5th meeting of the Board of uh, Township Trustees, Miami Township. Three, seven o'clock, the official. Two trustees in attendance, Fiscal Officer Solomon. Chief Altman, um, Cemetery Sexton and Road, newly named Road Administrator, Dan Gogenauer. Ooh. He's still on vacation for one more day. Mm -hmm. I can't call him road employee. We can't? No, we I don't like calling him road employee. And we no. can't call him supervisor because he's in supervisor. All right. What else is there? Road administrator. I like road <laughs> administrator. Thank you, Sexton. Ten Sexton. Well, Sexton. Do, do, do you mean Sexton? Yeah, Sexton. Your implications that we don't want. I'll submit that in writing. Uh, we have three sets of meetings uh, to submit this evening. The first one is a special meeting of October 12th, uh, 2018. Is there a motion to adopt seven minutes? I don't believe I was there. I believe you weren't there, that's correct. So I will not move. Okay. We'll okay. Vote on. I will move. Uh, move and I will second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, now I'm saying motion to adopt minutes of October 15th. I so move. There's a motion. Is there a second? There's a second. Move the second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? I found them perfectly transcribed. Wow. <laughs> accurate. Get a raise. And accurate to the three. No, you're not going to get a raise. <laughs> Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Aye. Mr. Crockett? Mr. Meacher. Aye, aye. <laughs> I now entertain a motion to adopt minutes of a special meeting minutes of uh, October 30th, uh, 2018. The minutes of the 12th were a special meeting also. Uh, all minutes, all meetings were publicly uh, notified. <coughs> Is there a motion? Yes. I'll second. There's a motion and a second for the discussion regarding those minutes. Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. And Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Now I entertain a motion to adopt payment of bills in the amount of $39,704.76. Broken down general fund, $3,648.07. General fund, $22,336.32. Cemetery fund, $582.20. EMS billing, $8,758.07 and road and bridge of uh, $3,065.99. Finally, the capital project uh, for $1,313.28. Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. We have a motion, is there a second? I'll second. We have a second, any further discussion regarding favor of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Aye. Mr. Hollister? Aye. Mr. Crockett? Aye. <laughs> the tire yeah. It's spelled differently. There's a Y. <laughs> Let's see if there's an A. a. Somebody <laughs> just misspelled it a long time ago. It's actually a yay. <laughs> okay, we have correspondence for the uh, period. We have a notification of the passing of the husband of the former township trustee, Carol, former Beat Creek township trustee, Carol Graff. Uh, we have the Ohio Township Association legislative alert and info. I knew there was something else. Uh, we have a contract uh, uh, proposal from Leisure Lawn. Let's put that into their cemetery, I guess. That's a good place for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a thank you and official notification that our uh, gas um, rates uh, were fixed for the next 12 months at 41. Uh, 0.9 cents per CCF from North American Power. And that's no different than what we've usually done, right? Through DP now? <clears throat> uh, no. Spectrum. Okay. Not electricity. Yeah. This, how much was, uh, what's the amount for CP? 41.9. Uh, it's up a little bit from the last contract we had with Direct Energy, but Direct Energy was not offering they, they weren't even out there in the market. I don't know if they're gone away or what. Uh, we have an executive director's update from MVRPC. We have a meeting to set review proposed transportation projects from MVRPC. 
and a meeting or uh, announcement for a planning commission hosting map gallery and recognition of international, not just national, international GIS day. That's November 14th. So be there or don't. Uh, we have two or three back and forth from MSA and Township about uh, the bids that were uh, submitted and opened last week and what we're doing uh, after that. And we can talk about that after the, the final report. Um, oops, we have some more regarding these things. We have um, oh, a copy of an uh, email from Don Hollister from Dale Arnold regarding his ability to meet with us on the 17th. Uh, so is that firm? Yes. Okay. So this is about uh, mm -hmm. yeah. our options mm -hmm. around solar farm regulation and such. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, email from Luke McCoy, American Transparency in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, asking for a second, this is a second attempt to get some information about salaries. I did this. Okay. Well, tell did you just loop. get another one, like recently? Yeah. A fifth? That's today. It must have been this morning. Okay. Well. Uh, a couple back and forth mm -hmm. about a meeting we're having tomorrow from the about the Clifton Yellow Springs connector. Uh, an informational email from Brian Hausch um, offering to set me up with a meeting from with Community Solutions about the Agraria Trail. I didn't put that. I was told about the Agraria, Agraria Trail. Uh, an email from Nate Ayers about his payroll. Um, no, the Clifton Station, which has been hurt and fixed. <laughs> put a band-aid on it. Um, a request, no, not a request. A message from OP and F about various extra times and reportings and things. Okay. Okay. What is OP and F? Oh, uh, Ohio Police and Fire. They they're oh. having a very difficult time for some reason interpreting. Is it still there? Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, I <laughs> I know they want now they want all the time cards from oh, never mind. Margaret and I are going to we're going to Columbus tomorrow. <laughs> Have an affidavit of publication from the no, Enquirer no, about, no, the, no. about the request for bids. Just one before we have that. Uh, we have an email back and forth from a used to be local resident and cemetery parcel owners about how she wants their her, her remains placed in their graves. We have a notice from the village of Yellow Springs regarding our new neighbors to the south, new neighbors to be. Uh, huh? Who? Uh, Home Inc. and oh. senior. Oh, neighbors of the oh. fire station. Yeah, 54, 54 happy, happy residents right behind us. No. <laughs> uh, meeting cancellation from the Township Association for the uh, November meeting. Uh, two copies. I don't know how we have two copies of the Township Association minutes. No, aren't they different types? It is, it is different types. Huh? Yeah, how do you do that? Oh, just lucky, I guess. Um, message from the Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority, or TARA, about their board of elections, uh, board of directors' elections coming up, and uh, revised somehow. I don't know if they didn't get enough. If, yeah, uh, if, if Tom, you'd like to crank up that photograph that you are still getting for us Actually, and put it on that. Maybe I have it on my smartphone. There you mm -hmm. go. A uh, copy from Melissa Howell of the Public Health uh, uh, Minutes of their November 1st meeting. And oh, there's a couple other things hiding out here. And a little blurb from Clementine about their um, uh, business. Their business and their open house from the, from the uh, Chamber that we went to, couple of and that's good enough. Any other correspondence in or out? That's, good, mean, enough. that's good enough for us. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> golly. Hearing none, may we move to the fire department report, please? We may. Okay. All right. Since the last meeting, there have been 53 EMS. No way. Like, 
Well, it was three at three weeks. It was three weeks, but that's yeah. still, I think, one of our highest. Uh, 14 fire and eight fire safety inspections. Are the fire ones generally anti related still? Um, not anymore, except in this period, they probably, there at least four or five of them were fire alarms in college. So. Things never change. <laughs> Free willing young people celebrating. You were one of them. <laughs> I was responsible. <laughs> um, so Halloween. Mm -hmm. Even though it rained, cats and dogs. People were still out, so we gave out almost all our 1,300 candy bars. And then they ate the rest. Yeah, I didn't get one. Oh, oops. That wasn't you in that costume. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't see the sign-up sheet until later. Oh? Well, okay. Next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it's yeah. seniority. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we had all the kids in Yellow Springs. There was, they were all apparently at Stafford and Davis. Um, and we went over to Clifton and did a fire engine ride. So a good time was had by all. Good job. <clears throat> and Clifton was extra busy, you said. Clifton was crazy busy for a town with 142 people. Um, mm. And they gave up 200 plus hot dogs. Yeah, it was a big, actually a really good crowd over there, so. We stepped in there, you usually do a, a hay ride, and the hay was wet from the rain, and no one wants some wet hay, so uh, we ended up doing fire engine rides, so. A good time was had by all, though I'm not sure about Joe, because he was driving, but, uh, <laughs> he still works here, so I guess it wasn't that bad of a time, so. Um, uh, as Chris alluded to, uh, Station 82 over in Clifton was assaulted viciously on the, uh, well, actually, we had no idea when it happened. Um, but the crew just discovered it on the morning of the 27th as they went over there for some other reason and found tree branches through the, through the ceiling in two places. Wow. Uh, the old branch fell off a near dead tree in the backyard. And unlike every other time that happened, I just bounced off the roof. <laughs> the exact, apparently the trajectory was right. So one came into the gym and one came into the kitchen. So I uh, contacted Chris and as well as Alex, the mayor, because they own the building. Alex uh, rapidly agreed to have the village pay to take the tree down, and uh, figuring that would be a nice cost share. And, uh, and Chris rapidly got us a roofer to fix the roof. Um, the boys covered it up temporarily with tarp, so I think by Monday, Monday or Tuesday, Chris was, not this Chris, but the other Chris. The other Chris was <laughs> fixing the roof, so it, voila, everything was good, and then um, we got a con work, and we got a quote from a contractor to fix the drywall and the ceiling. <laughs> it's kind of funny right now. Just a, <laughs> but all was better at Clifton, so. And I haven't been over there today to see if they got the tree down or not. Yeah, but hopefully soon. Um, <clears throat> any other college approached us about hiring a cooperative education student in the winter, whatever they call it, winter semester, block, quarter, I don't know where it is anymore. But, um, and actually, when the student, uh, student was interested in and working for us. So I interviewed him. He was a good kid, Jonas Robin from the yeah. Bronx. Great. Um, interested in uh, medical type things. So um, they leave in like two days <laughs> for this new schedule they have. So we back January 7th. Um, it'll be the standard deal we've done with Tess, Julia, and Stephen. So it's 8.25 an hour for up to 30 hours a week. Will, will this be a Miller fellow through the. No. They asked us about that years ago, and I called the person back, and then, and at that time, what was a very typical AARP response, they never called it back. <laughs> and it's changed now, which is much better, but, um, so anyway, he seems eager to work for us. And What's his level of training? He has nothing. Nothing, I tell you. <laughs> um, and he'll be a valuable uh, asset. He is a blank slate. Um, he would hope to take an EMT class that we're trying to get assembled for something January. He's got two more years. Uh, yeah, he's a sophomore, so he's got two more years in college. So. And if nothing else, hopefully, it turns out as good as as Julia. Yes. If nothing else, uh, one of those new projects is going to be taking um, the new fire code. You know, came out last year, and mm -hmm. we have to take the fire code that we have the, P the electronic version, the PDF, and cut and paste and enter it into our firehouse database system, mm -hmm. um, firehouse software system. Because we could buy the code set from Firehouse, 
but it's about three times the price. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure. Luckily, the PDF we bought is cuttable and pasteable. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> so, but it, it's a little time intensive because then you have to like get everything a title and everything. But, but we gotta have it so we can cite the right codes and. Okay, it's job. We haven't reached one yet, but <laughs> I warned him that there would be various administrative tasks. I'm sure he's up to it. I mean, I figure that, and if it snows at all, he'll be up on. On that roof, just like Tess and Stephen were twice a week, <laughs> shoveling the roof off, so it wasn't a leak anymore. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, we look forward to that and continue our relationship with the college. And then uh, I'm at here November 7th. I'll be back on the 12th for a conference in sunny, as of right now, sunny Florida. I'm hoping that doesn't change. It was also rain the day I fly out, so I can handle that. International Association of Fire Chiefs. But you'll be inside at the meetings. Correct. For at least a half hour. A at day. least a is half it, hour a day. Is, is there really folks from like other countries that says it's international? Uh, I've seen so international they really have, like, association. Spain I've and, never French. seen an international guy. This is the volunteer one, so it's much smaller in scale. They do a big one every year. It's in Dallas in August. I don't know who thought that was in any way, shape, oh, or form a good idea. It actually used to rotate between Dallas, Kansas City, and New Orleans all in August. <laughs> who planned that one? <laughs> You must get a good rate of convention centers, but this one they do right November in clear, uh, actually not in clear water, on Clearwater Beach because the Hilton is right there. So, and the con uh, the conference rooms have no windows, so you can't be at the window. It's actually a very good conference. This is my third year going, and uh, there I'm actually set up for a uh, take a recruiting and retention uh, all day seminar. Supposed to be taught by national Yay. experts. <laughs> every time I take it, then, every time I take these things, that I find that we're doing everything that they say you should be doing. But hey, take a sharp pencil. Yeah. So uh, and yeah, that's it. That's it, it until the yeah. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I may have asked this before, but how much of a trend do we see year to year on EMS incidents? As the as the the trend line Township is going up. Age goes up. We've had some dips, obviously, but the trend line continues up. And this year is trending to be pretty busy because we're already over 900 calls at the beginning of November. So we should be about 1,100 total calls. For last year was a touch below the year before. Was it that? Last yeah, year or the year I before? think it was last year was like a dip of 4% or 5% something. So. Okay, well that leads us well into our next discussion <coughs> regarding the fire. Uh, Don, I don't think you were here, but I know you were. So recall well, from your list. Gracious, you. mm -hmm. Pardon me. Uh, thank you. Really? About uh, two years ago, I think so. Uh, Bath Township approached us mm -hmm. uh, with the asking for the potential of our servicing their eastern, eastern, western. Eastern mm -hmm. portion? Their eastern portion. Yeah, oh yeah, I guess it'll be west of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their eastern portion, roughly the area from 235-ish yeah. into Miami Township. Um, and they, the whole height of Bath Township, that part too. Yeah. They uh, uh, were not getting along financially well with Fairborn, who's been servicing them for quite a while, and uh, we're trying to <coughs> get out of their contract with Fairborn, uh, enter into an agreement with us, uh, Mad River Township, uh, Beaver Creek Township, for service around, uh, of course, around Wright Path, which is their, their area. So anyway, we worked up some numbers and made a presentation to them and subsequently found out that, uh, and they were being transparent towards the end anyway, mm -hmm. that they needed that information to use as a negotiating tool with the uh, Fairborn Fire Unions, I guess it's the unions, um, for keeping their costs down or something because we were going to do it for roughly half the charge mm -hmm. that Fairborn is charging. So anyway, that went away um, until last week <laughs> and loaned to home, oh. as in most townships. Nothing ever goes away. <laughs> it may get quiet. <laughs> yeah. It may go uh, a 
point for a while, but it's back. So they've uh, come to us again, uh, asking us uh, to consider providing that service, at which time I almost choked on my chicken <laughs> and said, you got to be kidding. Uh, but cooler heads prevail, and a um, couple of times we were, we were ready for action. So uh, it is their intention and their willingness to uh, fund personnel for us uh, in the open, on the open market, from the open market, sufficient to cover uh, what potential might be for providing service to the uh, area you know, in question. And I said, okay, I will uh, present that to our fire chief and he can start crunching some numbers and seeing whether that's uh, a possibility. And he has, and he will tell us what he came up with. I shall. All right. Okay. Um, and let me just preface this by saying, I think, you know, obviously, before we would agree to anything, um, I just need to get a little better data from Beth. Exactly what portions they want to cover. Oh, with Matt, Matt River in there now. I don't know if they're going to take part. Um, it's got to be worth it to us, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm um, curious how far, roughly, what road would be the furthest north in Bath Town? It is, I'm sorry, I should have printed out the map. It, if you go up East Enon, where mm -hmm. it turns into North Enon and head mm -hmm. out, and then it hits West Enon, mm -hmm. there's a whole chunk of Miami Township has housing developments there. They're probably two acre lots, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're going to have. Um, that would be us up to the county line. So there's a little <laughs> chunk that goes up. The county up. line is before Wilkerson Road? Or? I think it may be Wilkerson Road. That is. I'm very familiar with North mm -hmm. Yep, okay, so. If I need. North <laughs> Just the road it's names disappear. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, this no. would be North Eden, this is mm -hmm. Blood Run. Mm -hmm. So, okay. this whole section would be mm -hmm. us. I think Wilkerson makes the, the county, is the county. Okay. Um, so, we would go up to there. And then, and then how, how far? far from 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 <laughs> the southern part, you don't need to eat in it, and then you get to eat in it. I don't, I don't want. I think it makes a turn. You're, you're talking just to me instead of everybody. It's just kind of awkward. Oh, it's just, well, they, they you were, answered my question. They, they've been through that map. But yes, you've been through this before. Map-wise, the only thing, one of the things I want to find out from them was last year's, or two years ago, proposal. <laughs> we were just going to stop at some arbitrary line mm -hmm. um, based on property lines, but because Fairborn was going to continue to service a very small part portion of that township, from like the Fairborn city limits out to almost 235. Yeah, right where their firehouse is. Right. I. It doesn't sound like that Fairborn's in the equation at all. And it doesn't to me either. Um, we'll find out. So we'd have to find out if they want us to go to the limit, mm -hmm. which really it's not much, because most of the development in our chunk is close to us. It's around the golf course and up along West Eden. Yeah. Um, so much of the other is, is quarry. Right. I mean, if we were to have to yeah. cover all the way to Trayline Road, that's, yeah, it's quarry and Calfield. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, definitely want to know that. Yeah. So, so what we're looking at, um, after, you know, went over this with, with Nate and Danny just to get their input. And so currently we staff, you know, one 24 hour position. <laughs> Funny how that works. 365 days a year. Um, and then weekdays, you know, including that position, there's at least four people here during the weekday hours. Uh, and the evening is anywhere from two to four, depending on the volunteer staff. Um, plus, we've got three people in the MT class right now who are volunteers. Um, and then hopefully this class works out for January, so we'll get some more. So what our idea would be is to add a part-time firefighter EMT who would work a 24-hour shift, one 24-hour shift every six days, which is the standard rotation that keeps them underneath the magical limit to get health insurance and retirement and all that kind of fun stuff. And it's a standard rotation that's used in Washington Township, Museum Township, and that type of stuff with part-timers. Um, 
So if we paid them what we pay our current shifted guys, we'd be anywhere from three to six, depending if they work one shift or two. Well, no, actually, it only be one of those 24 hours. So we'd be six of these guys. Um, that would cost us $100,000, basically, and some change. At, at their current hourly rate of 1150 um, So if that township wants to fund that, obviously that would be marvelous. And then our theory, would, our plan would be to build them and build that township board of trustees. $750 per call. That would be the home. They estimate, being they being the Bath Township Board of Trustees, we could see about 20 calls per month out of the chunk of the township we're going to cover. So if that is accurate, that's $15,000 a month of income, $180,000 a year. Yeah, that is $180,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money. I mean, it is a lot of money. Um, <laughs> And initially when we had spoken, when Chris and I had spoken with the trustees there, um, we had talked about filling them, I believe it was once a year at the end of the year, for the, for the calls we had. We'd also be billing <coughs> patients directly like we do here. Um, so we're figuring 80% of our typical call volume is EMS, so if you take the 20 calls a month, that 16 calls would be medical. Of those, probably 12 would be transports based on our experience here, so which we bill for. At an average rate of $480 according to MedCount. So that would, of course, all averages, but that would bring in an additional $69,000 a year in billing money. I'm making the assumption that our chunk of Bath Township mirrors my township a lot in demographics, mm -hmm. in that most people will be insured. And probably a good older population who would ensure through Medicaid. Um, so I mean, you're looking at a decent amount of money if those numbers are all correct. Um, <coughs> which I have no other reason not to believe those. But, uh, so would they pay you up front for the additional staff? That's what it sounds like Steve, I assume it was Steve, mm -hmm. told Chris that this most recent outreach to us, that they would be willing to you know, kick in to help. And then once the billing money kicks, you know, both the bill, contract billing to, to that township and the EMS billing, we should be making more than enough to cover that staff, that additional staff person. Um, the, uh, I was going to say. Use of the equipment. Right, it definitely will add that. <coughs> yeah, 20 calls a month in our chunk, I'm thinking it's probably a little, going to be a little bit on my side. I mean, it's obviously going to fluctuate, so that's probably an average. Uh, I would assume it was an average. Um, the unincorporated population of that township is not massively high. So I can't imagine that they will generate more calls than our unincorporated portions. Um, but, you know, we don't know, obviously. We also, I did a quick look at our firehouse software, which unfortunately only doesn't cover everything, but um, we have a relatively high incidence of getting two calls at the same time. And it's basically doesn't mean they came in at the same time, it's just the second one comes in while we're on one initially. Mm -hmm. right. um, and a relatively high incidence that happens maybe 20 times a year, 23 times a year. So um, it's not a huge number. Um, most of the time we're able to handle it currently, but this additional staffing would certainly allow us. Most of those calls happen during the daytime. Mm -hmm. It's usually a call from friends' care or something like that that comes while we're doing something else. So between, you know, we would actually go to with this new position, we now have five people working daytime hours, including myself and Demi. So that can fluctuate if we're at meetings or whatever. Um, but we try not to leave at the same time. And then we'd have three people working weekends on food volunteers. Mm -hmm. So it would definitely enhance our food service that we can provide both to our township and to the, the contract area. Mm -hmm. um, one thing Medicaid mentioned to me that to mention to you mm -hmm. all is that we would have to decide once they're under contract, should this all happen, do we want to treat those residents of that township in the contract area as residents 
basically as we do our residents in the township and not yeah. hard build that or go after co pays. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be a standard practice in a lot of places that if you're under contract, you're part of that township for building purposes. Mm -hmm. That would make sense to me, but um, and then account recommended that as well for the volume of calls expected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't seem to think that would be an issue with soft billing those guys as well. And I think that's what Fairborn does, so they're probably used to that. Okay, well anyway, so this is just a, an initial conversation. Uh, if you have questions, obviously, for, for the Chief, but keep in mind, I just need some guidance as to whether we want to pursue this with Beth Township or not. And truth be told, I guess I take more of the John Adams approach as opposed to Thomas Jefferson, the Federalist approach, and, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, a little, well. I'm a little, I'm a little queasy, I'm a little, I'm a little iffy about, you know, I was last time, and I was still a little iffy about extending ourselves out, but, um, you know, we like to be good neighbors, uh, they're good to us, we try and be good to them, if this is something that, you know, can benefit both of us, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be in favor of it. Uh, Devil's in the details, you know, obviously we have to have meetings to work on all these all these details and mm -hmm. uh, so you know what's your thoughts gentlemen well my personal thought is that whatever if colin feels that the project would benefit the township certainly financially and uh, staffing wise and I, I would have to go on with it. Yeah, yeah I, I would tend to defer to the chief. Uh, I also wonder whether this, in 10 or 20 years this will be another step towards mm -hmm. a fire district. Or the whole mm -hmm. you know, extension of mutual aid into mutual administration. Mm -hmm. uh, You don't, from your way of presenting this, you don't seem to see this as adding a burden management-wise. No, I, I, mean, I think our, I think it gives us the ability to fund an additional position, which I can't say we need right now, but it is a nice, nice addition, um, and gives us extra money that we can invest in the ambulance replacement or, you know, whatever we need. I mean, that's gonna be the biggest wear and tear. Yeah. Ambulance and I would probably put money in the tanker replacement as well, just because most of Bath Township that we'd be covering is non hydrogen areas. Mm -hmm. um, some I mean, the golf course or the former golf club area is hydrogen, mm -hmm. but, but that's about it. Um, where, where does mutual aid come from out there in the Netherlands of Bath, Bath Township? <laughs> if we needed it, mm -hmm. um, well, we might call fair one. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Fairborn, Houston, Eden, Zena Township would be, I mean, we'd have to look at that since it's not our district, we'd have to currently create it as its own district and, uh, at the dispatch center and then look at, you know, who the closest units that we can pull in for mutual aid. Who, who serves Enid? Mad River? Mad River Township. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, Mad River Township is, it's technically the, we call themselves the Enid dash Mad River. Where, where's their firehouse? Where's their equipment? It's right, downtown. right in downtown Enid. Mm -hmm. So they're not that far from the no. service area. It's a, we were they and I were looking at that today. Um, and it's actually a quick jaunt right down Davidson Road yep. to you know their portions. Of what I mean, assume their portions would be. How do you mean quick? That looks just as quick as it is for us to get there. You know, when we did this two years ago or whatever that was, I went out and drove routes to certain points in that area. And the highest, I think it was like 5.6 minutes, and that was going without license sirens, obviously. So it looks, I mean, I think maybe we can get to that, what I assume again would be their portions pretty quickly. Um, now, I don't know who, and it's not really, I guess, our concern, but there's a good size of chunk of Bath, Bath Township on the far side of right. Right, Patterson. Yeah. Um, so I would assume. That's the Riverside. Would that be Rivers? Are they going to contract with Riverside mm -hmm. as well? I think so. Okay, that makes more sense. We, we thought maybe Mad River would seem a long mm -hmm. 
That would be a long, a long haul. For a long haul, yeah. Um, okay. okay. Mad River, you know, they, they, I mean, not that it's a big, again, our concern, but they staff their station. Um, I think it's three people 24-7. Yeah. And they're significantly busier than we are, so it's a bigger burden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll relay this to, to Steve and, and we'll set up a meeting, uh, some kind of working session. Who something. are the three? Who's Steve? Is he a trustee? Or yeah, Steve the... Ross, uh, Tom Pitstick, and John Martin, three trustees uh, of Bath Township. Uh, all been in service uh, quite a while. Steve's probably the youngest and least seniority at probably 10, 10, 15 years. Maybe. Okay, anything else for that? Anything else for fire? Fire station, I think as everyone knows, the uh, uh, bids were open on, on third, Tuesday, Tuesday, was. Tuesday. and Tuesday, and uh, again they were over the 10% threshold, so we're back to uh, not necessarily square one, but we're, we're, we're pretty far back there. Um, <laughs> the basic Assumption at this point is there is going to necessitate a relatively major redesign of this building in some way, shape, or form. Uh, something that does not include changing the footprint. So that really limits us to uh, the roof, design, construction, and the exterior cladding, uh, the construction of it, not necessarily design it's going to stay the same. So, um, MSA has been directed to begin working on conceptual changes that would uh, bring us down into the ballpark <coughs> on a unheard of third public bid. <laughs> I'm not even saying that, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. How do, where does this... My understanding is that the contract with MSA we, won't, we don't have to pay them more, but if we're doing a major redesign, do we have to pay them more? No, it's on there. Okay. They're, they're, we are contracted with them for them to get a successful bid accomplished hmm. by public bid. And what it takes to get there is what we have paid them so far. So we didn't pay them for what work they did for the second, and it's going to be the same for the third. So anyway, but it's hmm. time, time, time. Mm -hmm. And frustration. <laughs> dates, dates in mind. Mm -hmm. Dates thought perhaps go back out to bed mid January. Okay. Which takes us into February to open and you know, March, to award. March to award and back into prime competition. And the big unknown is what the county is going to require in terms of yep. permitting. Since the footprint's not changing, the layout's not changing, that, that's a good thing. But mm -hmm. if they have to completely redo the roof system, which should, um, they have to. There's not a whole lot of areas of major cost, save, cost savings. Um, and that's a, I, I think that's going to require some structural programming. Yeah. Yeah. Unless Al's feeling really nice. <laughs> don't, don't get your hopes up. So if you were to send Christmas cards out, Al Kuzma. Al Kuzma. <laughs> Um, no, another thing, I had, had a meeting aside with a representative from Widener Design Group in Springfield, uh, just kind of, he was interested to see where we were in the project and what we might be thinking about doing. And just part of the conversation was, you know, we had speculated that uh, the reason the first bid was over substantially was a, a chunk of it was because of the economy and how busy contractors were and we were bidding it in June at the time, whereas now we wait till you know, November, December, whatever, and uh, they'll you know, be a little more hungry for work. And he said, that's ridiculous. There's so mm -hmm. much work out there. You know, it doesn't matter when your bid is, it's, they're still going to, you know, they're going to be just as uh, overworked uh, in January as they were in June. So if you think you're going to save money that way, uh, well, it didn't seem like we saved it this time. Uh, so anyway, so that's that was one thing. Um, there'll be other things to discuss as we go along. 
we had more responses. Nice we did, absolutely. Much more attention. So, <clears throat> anything further about our new firehouse? Any theories as to why we had more visitors? Was there more extensive advertising? Yep. It could have been part of it. Uh, there were glitches in getting the plans into the plan rooms early enough the last time around. Plus, it was only bid or only advertised for three weeks as opposed to four. Um, and so there were a lot of a lot of people took the plans out the last time. Maybe not as many as this one, but not as many submitted them because they couldn't get, according to our architects, they couldn't get decent firm subcontractor numbers uh, fast enough to put together a bid. This is why we had, what, three people here who were contractors, but no bid to do the project. So, yeah, there's a little enough. Interestingly, two of those, uh, two of our bidders this last time, mm -hmm. when they were here an hour early, and they both said the same thing. They were out of the parking lot waiting on the final order. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Obviously, it's a last minute wow. That's thing. Right. I, you know, one guy who's got some construction experience says, they always wait till the last minute to get in, and that's why it's mm -hmm. this big rush of so, we'll see. Okay, uh, cemetery and road report. Um, of course, the Sexton, Sexton Road Administrator has been gone for a little while. Uh, we've had a couple of things going on that, that I've been aware of. Uh, one is there are apparently two foundations that need to be put in in the cemetery for tombstones, uh, markers uh, that are either here already and don't have a foundation there or a foundation order was lost somewhere uh, in the, in the zeitgeist, I don't know, for a, a, a foundation that was ordered in May and has yet to be put in for a Milligan. Somehow that name sounds familiar now that it sounds close to yours, but I could have swore I, I saw a... Yeah, um, well didn't Dan, he relates, he did some foundation work, didn't he? Yeah, but not for this. Two weeks ago. Uh, I went out and checked, there's no foundation for mm -hmm. where this mm -hmm. goes. Yeah, I don't know. Have so to anyway, when he gets back, you know, I'll run this by. Yeah. Um, and both people I've spoken with and, and they're okay with, I mean, I didn't have much choice having to wait until, you know, we can put it in. As soon as we can. That name goes out though. Yeah. Um, I did have a call Saturday. I think it was Saturday. Friday. Uh, when it rained like crazy. Whatever that day it was raining Saturday. like. Saturday. Yeah. So I get a call from the village. Johnny Burns says, uh, well, you got a huge branch laying over high road blocking traffic. <laughs> I said, could you come out and move that? Of course. I said, oh, sure. I got nothing else to do. Uh, so I put my little rain gear on and uh, man was it raining. Uh, fortunately uh, Officer Meister was out there, um, lights and sirens, no sirens, uh, keeping traffic from, because you couldn't even see the hand in front of your face was raining so hard, keeping the traffic from running into this big old guy. And so I went out and got a truck and chain and came back and chained her out and pulled her off the side of the road and called Enoch Rice and <laughs> he was out there the next morning cleaning it up. So. Like it never even happened. <laughs> and no one, no one got hurt. It took me two or three days to dry out, but I, I did. But anyway, that was about the. I think that was about the extent of, of no so sexton, no administrator on duty. Um, yeah, I think that was it. So. Well, thanks for doing that. It didn't snow. It didn't snow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to go out there. I give I give you permission it. to call me too. Oh yes, <laughs> thanks. You got an umbrella? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'll three or four by the door. All right. Um, maybe. Um, okay. Well, anyway, so that takes care of that. Um, this club, sir. Did you know that I did not give you permission to call? <laughs> I did know. That. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to do this comment. I I saw on Houston Road what I would call. Uh, Asphalt breaking mm -hmm. up. Yeah, he knows about it. Okay. It, it, just, you know, it looks like it's funny. What you do is you, you get this stuff, cold patch, you're familiar with cold patch, mm -hmm. and put it on there, but it's so thin. It's thin yeah, it would come right back up. It looks like that's what already happened. Yeah, he's either got to dig some of that out before he puts his cold patch in or something. He, he does that all the time. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. 
I mean, it's not going to turn into, uh, uh, you know, some huge thing. You know, he'll keep at it one way or the other until we can get to it in the, in the spring. Uh, I'll back up just for a second. The cemetery, the local gentleman, I'm not sure how local he is, but Joseph Haynes, uh, I want to give him a shout out, as they say. He's a uh, volunteer, and I believe he's started to do some maintenance on, on tombstones that are, uh, he's, he's not repairing them per se, but he's cleaning them yeah. uh, and making them look nice and using uh, a products that uh, we approve of and have used in the past to, to do the work and, and the tools that we have used and approved of in the past. So, um, yeah. Lucky us. Whatever, yeah. Is there any precedent for like a volunteer group or association? Uh, not in Miami Township. Because that was what uh, uh, Linda, who walked with me in Clifton, mm -hmm. Linda Parsons, uh, was suggesting. It's a, a great idea. It's uh, certainly doable. It's not as easy as you would think. Uh, anyway, that's pending of the Clifton meeting. Great. I certainly hope it comes to fruition. Well, we might try. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Okay, so forward, onward, fiscal officer. Yes. Um, well, I think, does anybody have a copy of the, do you own the rest? Yes, I do. Okay, Someone. a copy of the um, of resolution 2018-47. <laughs> and um, as I, I'm repeating myself, but that's the way it goes at the end of the year. You figure, you find out where we're running a little short here and there and stuff and stuff. So anyway, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize amendments to the following permanent appropriations. Uh, the trustee's salary line is increased by 4520 4, My salary line is increased by 4500 there's an increase in um, Medicare by $225 and an increase in electricity by $200. In the fire fund, there's an increase in Medicare by $250. In the water and sewer line, by $200. Contractor services was increased by $3,000. Machinery, equipment, and furniture was increased by $1,741. EMS building, billing, uh, we increased contract services by $3,000. In the capital fund, I increase contingencies by three thousand dollars. That's it. Okay. Is there a motion to approve resolution two thousand eighteen forty seven? I would make that motion. There's I'll a motion. I'll second. There's a second. Any further discussion regarding <coughs> this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Well, well, huh? Anything else? It is. Mm -hmm. But the person will want something like this next um, <laughs> So we go. Does anybody remember who's responsible for the SAM registration and that code, associated cage code? Oh my code. God, I can't possibly do it again. The cage code <laughs> is about to expire oh in February. <laughs> At least they give you a lot of warning. <sighs> So February. Didn't uh, wasn't that a Julia thing? I've got all the stuff now. I had to do it last time <laughs> when we needed it for the USDA. So can I just renew it for like five years? <laughs> yeah. Do it while you're on the beach. Oh yeah. I like to call into that conference call from the beach. So. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind the uh, seagulls over there. <laughs> and we received notification, and Margaret, I should say, Margaret received notification from Otarma that uh, we are going to have. An appraisal done of our buildings, on-site appraisal. Any buildings valued at fifty thousand dollars or, or more. Hmm. I don't know if it's all buildings or one building, that. but I was talking to Wendy uh, French uh, about the potential insurance for the firehouse. But uh, I had just noticed this flying around on your desk. <laughs> really, you found that? <laughs> <laughs> and asked her. There was no date on. I wondered whether this is like this year, last year, you know, two thousand five, no, okay, no, whatever. No, it was. Well, uh, no. she said actually. She says this is like. Right now, so expect a uh, expect a call or a card or something from these people, and I think this is great because what it's going to do is it's going to give us an appraisal of this building, so we'll know, you know, uh -huh. where we're going with that without having to dig up and pay somebody to do it. So I think that's huh. good timing. 
Yeah, good job. Um, not Is there anything else on my desk that I need to do? <laughs> we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> I probably think I'm going to, okay, I don't need to do that right now. <laughs> okay, anything else for the fiscal officer? Anything for the zoning inspector first meeting of each month? Yeah, mm -hmm. Just meeting. I guess he didn't have much to say. I guess not. Uh, it is my unfortunate uh, duty, I guess, to notify us of, of the passing of one of our BZA members, right. Mr. Charles Kimball. Mm -hmm. um, we're sad about that. Uh, I sent his wife a condolence card. In the township. Mm -hmm. She's on the she's on the cemetery board. Mm -hmm. So now we're two BZA members short, apparently. And uh, unfortunately I had to cancel the last BZA meeting that was due this week, I think. Uh, it was the first. The first, yeah. Last week. So we're gonna have to hmm. well, I have, I have two names in mind, but neither of them have replied. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've actually gone as far as contacting them. Uh, I think it would be a good move to put a notice out. I mean, this has almost no activity. What, once a year? Mm -hmm. Or once every couple of years? <laughs> solicit people putting their names up forward. Put it in paper, is that what you're saying? I mean, I'd be happy to do that, too. That'd be good. Okay. Um, the village does it all the time, requesting yeah. commission matters. You know. <clears throat> the only drawback with that is, of course, most of the people who get the Yellow Springs news wouldn't qualify to be served on the BZA. We have, we have uh, every once in a while sent out letters to residents in an unincorporated area with, unfortunately, very minimal response. Minus responses. Right. <laughs> uh, well, it's just the township, it's not the village. Yeah. Right. Since, since I haven't heard back, I don't think I should mention their names in the public. Okay. Uh, both these folks, uh, I'm rather sure, subscribe to this newspaper. Okay. I, I mean, just so that is, there are hundreds of people in the perimeter of Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, but this does raise the notion. How do you communicate if, if letters don't seem to work? Grocery store. I mean, you guys have, have had more time at this than I have. Letters usually work. Well, maybe people read the letters but have no interest. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Could be there. Okay, I'm just, I, I hear a, I mean, we a, run, a very loud silence. Well, we run it's constant, <laughs> and it's entirely different, and I understand mm -hmm. that, but we run constant ads for necessity for volunteers, as mm -hmm. you know, and, and full page ads in special the, you know, publications, and you know, we get virtually no response from that. So, mm -hmm. and it's not is, unusual. Then, as far as volunteers go, that includes Yellow Springs. Oh, right? yeah. As yeah. opposed to. Right. Yeah. Maybe we could light a fire under Quilton. There's somebody, there's been some new residents who've been there. Use so. a different metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> so, anti residents, the unincorporated township to be a BCA member. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. outside of the village of Clifton, too. I mean, we can see what kind of response we get from, of course, this is not help us in the short term from the postcards that are going out to unincorporated members uh, of the township. Uh, we, can, we could uh, fine tune that a little bit more because the cemetery, the one we're working on, it goes further out into um, other townships than, mm -hmm. than us. You know, what database do we have, have for uh, names of the unincorporated? Uh, voter registration or voter, whatever that's called. Okay. Voter list. And now, DSM. DMS. DMS. <laughs> Inc. Inc. <laughs> um, they have access to, to postal rural routes or whatever those things yeah. are called. And uh, 
those are, those are pretty good from the, from the geographic areas of the routes that he showed So, you know, that's a thought too, but on the short term, we're going to have to fire something up. Although DZA can meet with, with three members. Uh, uh, in theory, they can meet with two. It's a, a, a majority of a quorum or something like that. There's some real thing. Fine print uh, in that. I mean, if you got five, you have to have three, and to have if you have a majority of the three, it's two. Oh. <laughs> yeah. huh. Very odd. Okay, that's all for zoning. No standing committees at the meeting. At this meeting, new business. I have one new business. I guess leisure lawn. We could add that somewhere else. But is there any reason we don't want to re uh, re contract with leisure lawn for very minimal applications to the cemetery to keep dandelions down? So uh, only at the only on the perimeters. On the, um, it's not exactly the right way, but it's on the road frontages, and, and it's worked. Um, so. Well, I would defer to past practice, although I see nothing wrong with analyzing. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I know that. A lot of people who go to the cemetery want maybe an aesthetic that I don't. That's, yeah. and we that's, that's all right. And that's basically the reason we got to this point, yeah. is, is from the public complaints. complaints. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, so I'm thinking we're doing it. Mm -hmm. so are you motioning or are we just going to do it? I don't think we have to motion. I don't think we do. <laughs> Uh, I have. Okay. You, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Okay. Go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. Sort of a report, or whatever. Uh, I went to just a, a very short part of uh, the landowners resource event. That mm -hmm. I wonder if you're going to go. Yeah. Uh, and it's possible that one or the other of you went for some other part of it. Uh, I was very impressed with. The displays information. Uh, I, I couldn't tell uh, how many actual landowners were there, mm -hmm. uh, but Lamar uh, Spracklin, former trustee, was there. This was um, was this sponsored by the Agraria folks and Community Solutions and Tecumseh Land Trust. Uh, I think it was. Technically, maybe a half dozen organizations, the, okay. the partner organizations uh, that supported Tecumseh Land Trust application for this what, close to $3 million uh, Jacoby mm -hmm. Creek no, I, uh, yeah, I remember conservation about grant. Um, <coughs> certainly, Agraria was centered on in the most prominent display, uh, but uh, on an aside, Lamar commented that uh, the solar, the proposed solar uh, field, solar farm, that's mostly in Cedarville Township, his understanding was projected to be 1,400 acres of which about 1,000 had been Options. Is that right? Um, and uh, he didn't think, he said it, it was speculative. There's a good chance it would never come to pass, but uh, in any case, I think it was a great event. No, okay. no, from the amount of time I was there, there's no way of knowing. What traction they really have? How, how many landowners are going to sign up? I know the old saying of "wishes for horses and beggars would ride," but I, mm -hmm. I wished I was able to go. I just could not float mm -hmm. that much time on Saturday. It was just, but yeah. there's three million dollars waving around for five yeah. years. <laughs> well, I hope they use every penny. Anything else in old business? Is that old business? Mm -hmm. No, that was new business. Talk. We've got a whole business.
the old business. I had one piece of old business. As you recall, after the convention this spring, I came with a report that the Bureau of Workman's Compensation had this nifty little program that if you signed up for it and took a, took a survey, that you'd eventually get yourself a $75 gift card. And by golly, my $75, well, I don't want to pull it off, my $75 gift card <laughs> came in the mail today. Yay! Very good. Where are we going to dinner? So there we Now, wait a minute. <laughs> gift cards. Please go away. It's Christmas. Okay. So, that's all. Congratulations. Thank you. I only worked 10 minutes to get it, and one drop of blood on my one little finger. <laughs> I just I tried, got an invite. Do it, but it didn't. It can't be done. I just got an invite, you know, from the UWC, from right. the department to do it. So you see if you're not so you want that. The free people I mentioned to you so far are seeing seventy-five dollars yeah. just to my blood drawn. Mm -hmm. So I got to bring up the drill because they can come on site and do it if they have enough people. So. Can okay, I do it? Then do all my mail. Oh, this thing said we either had to do it, like go to somewhere or. Or do a bad ale. There's another. They just send you a little packet of it. And a vial and a little squeezy thing. And <laughs> you put me on the list. A little squeezy thing. Oh. All right, anything else for the evening? Hearing none? Did it take a motion to adjourn? Just about an hour. Yeah, I know it's a little. Nobody else will. Please or whatever it is expired. Uh, the request for people to nominate themselves expired for 26. So that's why we proceed. Oh, guess they don't want us. They're correct. I looked it up. We do expire in February, so yeah. I'll log on and take care of it.